Welcome to the Hep C, or if you've seen our micro video, welcome back to the Hep C. This beautiful body of water is the perfect setting to talk about the direct acting antivirals, or DAAs. Here at these pristine shores, untouched and unspoiled by humans, and ah, oh, god dang it, not this guy again. Ah, who am I kidding? I told them to draw him in. Anyway, if you remember from our micro video, we symbolize the direct acting antivirals with this famous director of nature documentaries. I guess he's back for a second season. Every good nature documentary needs a subject, and so we'll bring back our hippo with a little C-shaped earring to remind you that the DAAs are the treatment for hepatitis C. So the direct in the name means that these drugs directly inhibit viral proteins themselves. That's as opposed to earlier drugs like the interferons that promoted an immune response. So I guess those were sort of indirectly acting antivirals. Anyway, as I said, the DAAs directly inhibit hepatitis viral proteins, and fortunately there are only really three classes that you need to know. We'll symbolize each of those with a different creature in this scene. So the first viral target is NS34A, which is a protease, and we'll symbolize that with this sign for the coldest part of the Hep C, which is the North C. See the NS34A in that sign? NS34A is a protease, and so, as you might expect, the drug targeting it is a protease inhibitor. All of the NS34A inhibitors end in Prevere, like for instance, Glicaprevir, and so we'll symbolize the drugs with our Previr praying mantis. Now, our recurring symbol at Sketchy for a protease is a cleaver, it's something that cuts proteins. And if you think about a praying mantis, its claws are really kind of just like cleavers. So we'll give our Prevere praying mantis here a big cleaver on the end of its arm. And you'll see that it's getting stuck in the North C sign to indicate that this is a protease inhibitor, that cleaver is getting inhibited. So putting it all together, our Prevere praying mantis has its protease inhibitor cleaver getting stuck, and that protease inhibitor targets the North C NS34A. Alright, the next viral target is NS5A which is an RNA binding phosphoprotein that seems to play some role in viral RNA replication, but its specific function isn't perfectly well understood. Uh, which is great for us because we don't need to worry about it. NS5A inhibitors all end in ASVIR, like lepidasvir, so we'll symbolize them with our ASVIR ASP. This snake has a peculiarly flexible body that allows it to form the shape of a 5, and you'll see that its triangular A-shaped head indicates that it's a venomous snake. So that's our NS5A inhibitor, our Asvir ASP. Alright, two down, one to go. The last target you need to know is NS5B. The NS5B inhibitors all end in Buvir, like Sofosbuvir. So we'll have our Buvir beaver here building a dam. That's because NS5B is an RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. It's involved in replicating viral RNA. And so you'll see that the beaver is building a dam inhibiting or blocking this single-stranded orange river, and that's our recurring symbol for RNA here at Sketchy. You'll also notice that the river is making the shape of a 5, and that beaver's buck teeth look curiously B-shaped. So that's our NS5B inhibitor, Buvir beaver, inhibiting further RNA production. And by the way, if you're ever having trouble remembering if a drug is an NS5A or NS5B inhibitor, there's a little clue in the name. The NS5As are Asvirs, and the NS5Bs are Buvirs. Now, I mentioned interferons earlier, and along with ribavirin, those are actually no longer recommended as first-line treatments for patients with HCV because they have a lower cure rate and increased adverse side effects compared to DAAs. So we'll symbolize that with this smashed up walkie-talkie with its broken alpha antenna to symbolize that you shouldn't use interferon alpha in these patients unless they've failed previous therapy. Alright, so three drug classes that you can use and one that you shouldn't use, that's really not so bad. Well, it does get a little more complicated than that, but only a little. DAA regimens are fixed dose regimens that use drugs from two different drug classes. So we'll put a little poster advertising for our nature documentary. Uh, on the wall of this tent here, and we'll put our Buvir Beaver and our Asvir Asp on the poster to remind you that you should use two different drugs from two different classes. Or maybe the next day they received a letter saying that there was going to be a six-month delay before they could leave the shoot. 
which leads us to our next symbol. So we'll have a crew member lying down in this tent here, just feeling kind of crappy. They're nauseous, they're tired, their head hurts. Maybe they celebrated a little too hard at their rap party last night. All right, so there are two important treatment considerations you should know about. First of all, you need to have a six-month delay in treatment after the initial infection in order to allow for the chance of natural viral clearance. So you don't start these drugs right away, you wait six months. And then second of all, you have to check for cure. So you need to achieve a sustained virologic response, or SVR, meaning you can't detect HCV RNA on PCR for 12 weeks after stopping treatment. And so to symbolize this idea that you need to check for viral eradication, we'll have some of these hippos running away into the distance. Good riddance, even though they are kind of cute. And there you have it. That's everything you need to know about DAAs expressed in just three creatures, a praying mantis, an asp, and a beaver. Actually, now that I think about it, the beaver definitely does not live where all these other things live. But whatever, I'm a doctor, not a zoologist. Let's just all agree that we're not going to worry about it.